This drink supposedly prevents weight gain when you eat carbs. And it's just one of nine glucose hacks experts claim stop blood sugar spikes no matter what you eat. So I'm testing them all with this. It's a fancy glucose meter. But I'll be ranking each one on how well they actually work and sharing the best ones with the person who needs them more than anyone else. Okay, no, it's me. Eating Christmas cookies in disguise. Every year I eat too many of these. But I plan to combine the top three hacks at the end and see if you can finally eat Christmas cookies without the seasonal weight gain. So let's start the first test. This is a tall glass of water with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Refreshing. But this first hack is one that every expert swears by. But you count this as one of your most important hacks, is to yes. eat vinegar every day. So vinegar contains acetic acid, which interacts with your digestive enzymes and cuts the glucose spike of your meal by up to 30%. Yeah, I can already tell this one's gonna work. Cause if I have to drink this every time I eat cookies, I probably won't be eating many cookies. But now that my belly is full of Easter egg dye, it's time to see what happens when I eat a meal. Oh, and if you're wondering how I'm measuring whether these hacks work or not, yesterday I recorded baseline measurements for comparison. I ate the same exact meal in the same exact portions in three hour intervals. I um also ate some cookies, you know, for science. So we can see what happens to my blood sugar when you combine the top three hacks at the end. But here are my results with vinegar. Yesterday at 9.30 a.m. with no vinegar, 159. Today at 9.30 with vinegar, 169. Maybe chugging water before you eat can help you eat less, but I'll be skipping the vinegar. Kind of a depressing start. Fortunately, I may have already found something that does work. Yesterday when I was recording my baseline measurements, I was also testing hack number two. You know how your mom is always saying, Don't eat late at night. My neighbor Sally says it makes you gain weight. She heard it from a girl on Instagram, and I trust her. The girl, not Sally. She's always peeking over my fence and look- Sally, I'm testing if when you eat actually matters. Since every meal I ate was perfectly identical, the only thing that changed was the meal time. And what happened next was the, the most dramatic, suspenseful thing since the ending of M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. The exact same meal caused slightly higher glucose spikes at 12.30 and 3.30. <laughs> <clears throat> now you might be wondering why this even matters. According to doctors like David Ludwig and Jason Fung, carbs spike blood sugar, blood sugar triggers insulin, and insulin pushes sugar into fat storage. So the more I spike blood sugar with Christmas cookies, the faster I'll start to look like Tim Allen in the Santa Claus. And based on today's readings, it looks like eating small meals every three hours keeps you in fat storage the whole time. And Sally was right. The biggest spike was at 9.30 p.m. So we're gonna put meal timing in the column that does work. Maybe I'll be eating cookies for breakfast. Or maybe these other hacks will work even better. Steaks. Tension. Drama. Gossip girl. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. Okay, this isn't breakfast tomorrow. Something crazy happened in the middle of the night. At 1 a.m., there arose such a clatter. But it wasn't Tim Allen on my roof. It was the sound of my blood sugar face planting off of it. I feel like shaky and sweaty. Is it weird that I hear Dr. Berg's voice in my head? One solution is to get out of the diet what triggers this in the first place. You know, the sugars, refined carbohydrates and things like that. Yeah, my wife will tell you that my listening skills have room for improvement. But the quick sugar made the shakes go away, and I put on my sleepy time mix and quickly fell back asleep. It's reacting to the high carbs and also the frequent meals. That can't be good. For anyone wondering, eating cookies in the middle of the night is not good for your blood sugar. And now I'm gonna have to wake up at 1 a.m. again to test the three best hacks. You know, for science. Let's 
go to the next hack. You know how your mom is always saying, eat your vegetables? Well, supposedly eating your veggies before the rest of your meal is a glucose hack. The idea here is that the fiber from vegetables coats your intestines like a protective layer. So it slows down the arrival of glucose into your blood and it slows down that spike. You can make the experiment if you're wearing a monitor. Just have a, a small plate of, you know, carrots or spinach or broccoli or cherry tomatoes or whatever veggie you like before a meal and see how much smaller your glucose spike is. Yeah, we saw how well that worked for the vinegar. No veggies at lunch yesterday? 167. Same meal, same time, but with some gas-inducing broccoli, 143. Veggies definitely works. Wait, does this mean I have to eat more vegetables now? Next up we have cinnamon. I am a cinnamon lover because it could do wonderful things for your body. Is it good for your blood sugar? Absolutely 100%. It helps lower your blood sugar by fighting diabetes. It will make all the difference to help your body heal and repair so your body will love you. I really hope this one works because I have no issue with eating snickerdoodle cookies every single day. <coughs> okay, I decided to sprinkle it on my rice instead. I'm calling this Christmas rice. Tastes like rice you dropped in the dirt. And it didn't really do anything. I am a cinnamon lover because it tastes like Christmas. But it's going in the this don't do dilly column. <clears throat> but here's where things started to get scary. The next hack I tested was walking in the dark freezing night. I suppose I could have walked around my house like Williston does every day. That's what my wife calls the Roomba. But this one is the first hack I really didn't want to bother with. I'm tired. I'm full. Can't see anything. It's time to watch TV and marinate in insulin. Not freeze my beans off in the dark. The 10 minute post meal walk. This one it's mind blowing. Walking for just 10 minutes after eating. This lowers insulin, lowers glucose, and increases fat burning for hours. Don't mind me, just your friendly neighborhood ghost. Lowering my blood sugar and increasing my fat burning for hours. Okay, yesterday's post dinner spike was the smallest at 149. Add a cold spooky jaunt in the neighborhood and you get 126. That's, that's actually mind blowing. Post meal ghost walk, totally worth it. This one's definitely gonna be in the top three when I test those cookies again. But now I'm kind of wishing I'd saved it for my 9.30 meal. Last night, my blood sugar spiked the highest at 9.30 PM. I don't wanna talk about the midnight cookie bender. But our next hack supposedly works better than all the others I've tried so far. And all you have to do is pop a pill. America. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you. It's Serena's sweat and tears. No, it's, it's berberine. Berberine is probably the number one thing you can take for balancing blood sugar levels and helping insulin. Basically, if you want to take something that's amazing for balancing blood sugar, like for diabetics, there's nothing better than berberine. Not gonna lie, this was the easiest hack I tried. Merck. And what happened next was the most suspenseful, dramatic twist since the ending of M. Night Shyamalan's movie, Signs. Yeah, berberine actually works. Like, better than anything else so far. A difference of 183 to 114. If I wake up at 1 a.m. tonight and eat cookies, I'll be popping some berberine. Hack number seven is something called glucose disposal movement. It sounds dirty, but it literally just means doing some light movement to help your muscles soak up glucose. The glucose goddess demonstrates this in a video that is all about- Wait, how in the heck? <sighs> so I just ate my lunch and it's time to activate my muscles. Yeah, doing this one feels just as awkward as it looks. But this hack is supposed to work the same as walking. So if you have to work or can't get outside, you could do this. But your coworkers will probably laugh at you. Okay, I thought this one was just like walking, but my blood sugar's only slightly lower. 
This hack works a little bit, but you probably won't see me doing it again. And speaking of things you won't see me doing often... Hack number eight is a cold shower, which supposedly activates brown fat and improves glucose metabolism. Imagine having to freeze your beans off after every meal you eat. I've learned there's two kinds of people in this world. Those who tell others how great cold exposure is for your health. You need to get uncomfortably cold for 11 minutes a week. And those who actually try it. Oh gosh. It didn't work. The good news is that I won't have to take a cold shower every time I eat carbs. And there's just one hack left to test before we take the top three and get to eat cookies again. But this last one is kind of a strange recommendation, mainly because I think most people already do it. Dressing your carbs means eating them in combination with fats and proteins, which supposedly slows down the rate of digestion. Technically, I've already been dressing my carbs by eating them with chicken thighs. Actually, cookies aren't even naked carbs if you think about it. So the only time I haven't dressed my carbs was when I tried the sugar diet. And the blood sugar spikes on that were pretty insane. But here you'll see me eating plain rice by itself, like a sociopath, which did end up causing a slightly higher blood sugar spike. So dressing your carbs does work, but unless you're drinking soda or juice, you probably don't need to add more calories just to try to lower your blood sugar. And I think I know the top three hacks now, so there's only one thing left to do. Wake up at 1 a.m., creep downstairs like a crazy person, pop a berberine pill, murk, eat some veggies, enjoy some cookies, and go for a walk in the freezing cold night, all in the name of questionable and relatively unimportant science. I'm starting to think that eating fewer carbs is an easier solution.